it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and today I'm here to show you how to use the log cabin trim tool to make perfect log cabin quilt blocks. I have filmed another video on log cabin quilt blocks where you don't need any special tools or rulers, but today I wanna to show you how this tool can really make these blocks perfect. It's actually my preferred method of making these blocks, and I can't wait to share with you all about how to do it today. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already, and now let's get started. Okay, so when I'm making scrappy log cabin blocks using this log cabin trim tool, what I like to do first is just cut a lot of different strips. And so you can see I've cut um, strips in all the different sizes that I'm going to need in different colors and different lengths. And I've got my, my darks and I've got my lights all cut. And I've just kind of got them in piles. I also cut some center squares from a variety of fabrics. And I like to cut for a lot of blocks like this without really knowing how they're all gonna go together. But if I have a lot of strips cut and a lot of different pieces cut, I can get it all, you know, work on several blocks at one time. And the first thing I do though is I do lay out my pieces. I will take the pieces and I'll kind of choose six of the darks and six of the lights and the center square and I'll lay it all out together before I start sewing. Now one thing to note with the log cabin trim tool, these pieces are all oversized. We are going to be squaring up our blocks as we go through each round. We're gonna do um, three different trimmings, but it's going to make sure that this block ends up the perfect size. We're making eight and a half inch blocks and this ruler is eight and a half inches square. So at the end, our finished log cabin block will be exactly the size of the ruler. And that really helps when you're putting your quilt together. So I'm going to lay out the first block and then I'll show you the three different times that we trim and how you sew and how you trim. Okay, so I went through all my piles and I just kind of arranged and rearranged until I got a good combination that I liked. I actually, just looking at it, I think I'm gonna switch out my center square and give it a little bit brighter. Um, so that's what I do. I, I take the scraps and I, ju I just make a block that I think I'm gonna like put to putting together. And then I'm going to start by sewing these two pieces together and I'll press out and then also this one and press out and this one and this one and then we'll be ready to trim. So I will head over to the sewing machine and I'll sew these center five pieces together and then I'll come back and show you how to trim that unit. Okay, so I'm back from the sewing machine. I've sewn my two light fabrics and my two medium fabrics to my dark center square and I've pressed out with each strip that I've sewn. So you can see how that looks. And so now we're ready to make the first trim. If you noticed on the ruler, there are three darker squares and you use one of these squares each time you trim. So after you've sewn two lights and two mediums, we're gonna do the first trimming. Let me get these pieces out of the way. And you're gonna take this top square that's closest to the corner and you're going to line it up with your center square <clears throat> and what you'll notice is that you have extra fabric so you're going to trim those two sides and then you're going to flip it so that you're trimming the two light fabrics you're going to again line up that center square with the trim square and trim the remaining two sides. 
So now you have a perfect unit up to this point. And now you're ready to start adding um, two more lights and two more of your uh, medium and continue around the circle. But what I've done is I've actually taken some other blocks and I've sewn up until the next two points so I can just show you without having to sew those. So here is a unit that was like this and then I added two more lights and two more of the print fabrics. So with this one we're going to trim on the second centering square. We're going to line that up with the center square. I'm going to trim the two print sides and then flip it, line it up again, and trim the two sides with the, with the light strips. So again, now this is a perfectly square unit and it's time to add the final pieces. And I've done that so we can trim. This is what, what your unit will look like. And at this point, we're going to use the third centering square, which is right in the center of ru the ruler, which will make your block completely square with the, your square right in the middle. And so at this time, you can see You'll be able to um, see that you've got extra fabric on all four sides. If you have a rotating cutting mat when you're trimming these, you can just rotate the mat. Um, or you can rotate your, your block. And at this point, when you make these final two trims, the bottom of your block and the, and the left side of your block should exactly match with the ruler. And you trim these final, final two strips and you have an absolutely perfect log cabin block. So you can see why I really like this ruler for that. Okay, so we've finished piecing our perfect log cabin block with the Creative Grids Log Cabin Trim Tool Ruler. Um, this post wasn't sponsored by Creative Grids in any way. I just love this ruler. I love using this method for making my log cabin blocks. And they're so much fun to make. When, when you spend this much time and you gather your fabrics and, and you cut it all, you want the blocks to turn out perfectly. So I really do like this method. I do have a printable that you can download from my blog that gives you all the sizes of the strip pieces that I used because they're oversized. It's not the, the size that you would use if you were making this block without the ruler. They're oversized. I have all the measurements. I have information on how many strips you need to make several different sizes of quilts. And I will put the links to that in the description below. So you'll be able to go to the description below and then click on the link and, and go to my blog where you can download the information for these blocks. Um, remember, if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel to do so, and thanks so much for stopping by.